All right, here we are. Nick, Nick Ames, Guardian football expert, Kosovan football expert. Thanks thanks so much for joining us uh, here on the Pink, and mate. Much appreciated. From your, your Euros base in, in uh, did you say Munich? You, you were there, Nick, at the moment. You're here, there and everywhere. Yeah, Munich at the moment. It's, it's looking quite sunny outside. We had a pretty colossal thunderstorm last night, though, so uh, I'm, I'm turning carefully. Good man, good man. Um, I'd love to chat to you about the Euros, but, but to, to more pressing matters, if you're a Norwich fan, it's all about... Now, I'm going to say his name, and you straight away pick me up on the pronunciation if it's completely wrong, but I'm going to say that Norwich's new signing, Milo Rashica. Is that um, a wrong um, I'd say Rashica. Rashica, there you go. Straight away, we've learned something, Nick. Thanks for that. Um, Kosovan International, which is where I'm hoping you'll be able to give me and, and the Norwich fans some insight, because um, since the news was confirmed by Norwich, um, just uh, sort of, Tuesday afternoon, I'm losing track. Yeah, Tuesday afternoon. I think his Bundesliga backstory is pretty well known now. You know what he's done at Werder Bremen, um, the clubs he's been linked with, Aston Villa notably, 12 months ago. But also, he's a fully-fledged Kosovan international and and you've charted the, the, the story of the Kosovan national team very closely. Um, so, to start with, Nick, just give us a brief overview. Anybody's not aware of the sort of the political backdrop to that, but it's, a, it's an unbelievable story. Um, and then, more pertinently, Rish... Rashika, Rashika, I'm gonna have trouble here, mate. <laughs> Rashika, go on, say it again. I go Rashica. Rashica, sorry, I should have pronounced it. I should have pronounced it. <laughs> uh, and his story as well, which you know, in the mm. in the recent times, is uh, it's unbelievable. You know, just missed out on the Euro uh, sort of 2020 tournament, didn't they? So just give us just give us an overview on the the Kosovan football story. Sure. So so Kosovo um, was a part of the before Yugoslavia. Um, and then obviously that broke up and since then it was contested quite heavily between Serbia um, um, of, of which it was considered part and and then a more ethnically Albanian independent country of its own um, so Serbia thinks that Kosovo is part of Serbia Kosovo considers um, itself independent and and declared um, independence I think 10 or 11 years ago um, so FIFA and UEFA have recognised this, and I think since 2016 they've been members of FIFA and UEFA. But until 2014, um, they were not able to play official international football matches, um, which is where it gets in gets interesting here, really. So they played their first official um, international game before being members of FIFA and UEFA against Haiti in uh, t um, March 2014. I was there, actually. It was an absolutely shocking, shocking pitch. The game should never have been played, really, in, in, in the north of Kosovo, but they kind of had, had, had to get it on. They pulled it off, um, and then they developed their infrastructure from there. It was very difficult at first. The facilities, as we might come to, and, and Milan Rashica will know a lot about this, were were very, very poor. Um, but they built up, built up, tried, tried, and ultimately got into FIFA and UEFA. Um, because the vast majority of countries in, in the world recognise Kosovo as an independent state, by the way. Um, and then it went from there. They they played in um, Euro qualifiers, World Cup qualifiers, Euro qualifiers again, um, nation um, Nations League, and they're now, as as I think some of you will have seen when they played England a, a couple of times over the past couple of years, a, a, a fully fledged international football country with some really good players, and and Norwich have signed arguably the best one of them. So it's a fascinating story. That's that's a, a very potted version of it, um, but. It's, it's been a remarkable rise of, of Kosovo from, from where they were even seven years ago and what they were playing in and the players they had to to where they are now. It's, it's little short of a fairy tale. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, I mean, having basically tried to do a bit of gen before I spoke to you, it is an unbelievable acceleration from almost the standing mm. start to, as I said, very close to be at this current tournament, the one that you're covering, you know, they, they lost a playoff to North Macedonia, I think I'm saying. Um, and Rashita wasn't available, was he, Nick? But, but you were just telling me about a really interesting job because, of, as we all know, the pandemic has pushed everything back, including those playoff ties. That game took place in October of 2020 where he, he had a knee injury. Uh, so, unfortunately, he didn't play. But I think the original tie you were saying to me was, uh, was, the, was it the March of that year or the year before? Um, yeah, March, yeah. 
and, and and you'd actually sat down ahead of what was the original playoff tie and, and spoken to the man himself. So just give us a little bit of an insight into what you felt about speaking to him, his sort of the character side of it, as much as, as the guy's ability as well. Yeah, what you what you've got in all all of these Kosovo players is a real drive and a real hunger. And it's it largely does come from where they've come from because in in in, in the late 1990s there was a, a very very brutal war against um, well with largely serbia and and it was it was very bloody very brutal lots of people died lots of people had had to leave the country so you've now got a new generation of footballers a lot of them were like refugees or, or moved to Germany or Scandinavia or Switzerland, especially, and then grew up in those countries, but now play for Kosovo. Um, and a lot of them spent some time in Albania, for example, which is next door, and then came back. Most most people lost something or had some had some kind of traumatic experience. And and I think this generation of players is, is very motivated by that, and you can see it whenever they put the shirt on. They 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 are fighting for for something more than football. It's they 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 tear into games. It's it's remarkable to watch sometimes. And Rashid is 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 very much one of those players. He he was born in a town. Uh, it's probably about forty five to fifty minutes outside the capital, Pristina. Um, he he was born and i think the war probably got going when he was about two years old um so him him and his family moved to um to albania next door they spent i think he said three or four months there because because there was too too much fighting going on in their hometown and they came back and everything had gone the, the house was burned down the lot um so they had to start again build up again start their lives again uh, which is very common for for people in Kosovo around that time, and they did. And he um, he he joined the local football school in in this town, Vushti. Uh, I think his uncle was was a football um, had had played football. His dad was a dentist, but also very interested in football. So put a lot of his work aside and brought him to the to the local football school, and it kind of went from there for him really. Um, he made his professional debut, I think, for um, for Bustria, um Well, I say professional debut, senior debut, when he was about sixteen. Um, and I think the remarkable thing is that he's in the Premier League now, and he's come from the Kosovan League originally, which doesn't happen, didn't happen, because the standard of football that he's he started out in, especially facilities wise, was just nothing i i can't emphasize it enough by by european standards it, it was utterly negligible um so he's not got that academy education which i think you might see a bit in how he plays not not because he, not because he, he can't do the tactical or, or technical stuff but because he's spontaneous and, he, and he's got that bit of something else that you can't really teach um and he's he's pushed on from there um but it's been a remarkable journey considering that yeah he he started out in the in 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 the local team in a small town in kosovo that did have to start again after the war yeah it is a phenomenal backstory and obviously verda but prior to that he was in holland i mean did you chart you know how he went as you said from the to sort of the kosovan breeding ground in terms of football how did he get picked up and, and then found found his way into those more recognizable sort of european leagues yeah, he was he um, he he was spotted on trial, um, I think, by a, a a test scout, and I think that would have been around two thousand and fourteen. I, I think that wasn't wasn't long after Kosovo started playing inter international football, um, at that point, and and the test really really liked him, and um and he signed on from there, and he 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 pretty much I think it maybe took him a year or so, but he he became you know an absolute star attacker for them um at that point he wasn't on the Kosovo. well he, he was on the Kosovo national team's radar but he was in the albanian national team's system because wow. um, because when um, when he was a kid coming through everyone in Kosovo could see how good he was but when he was 16 17 there was no Kosovo national team 
to play for. So a load of these lads, they 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 um, they're ethnically Albanian. Um, that's how things are there. Like Albania and Kosovo, very very strong cultural ties, very strong ethnic ties. So um, so a guy from Kosovo could probably play for Albania. So he he went through the youth team of Albania. And he actually made his international debut for Albania in, I think, around, I think it was 2016, having played for their 21s. Um, because at that point, still, Kosovo wasn't recognised by UEFA and FIFA. Um, and then, obviously, when Kosovo were given membership of those, and he hadn't played a competitive game for Albania, he was allowed to switch. This might all, this might all sound a bit complicated, I don't know. Um, but, wow. uh, um, but because Kosovo was a new country, yeah, he was allowed to switch to them basically, yeah. um, and that is how that happened. So, so that happened while he was at Vitesse and and coming through. And I think there was quite a big angle between Kosovo and Albania for his services because everyone could see with the start he made in 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 Dutch football that he was the real deal. Yeah, and, and, and obviously you touched on you know the whole almost diaspora that's had to to go and, and leave when 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 things were really bad and, and you know, the names that spring to mind are the Granite Jackers, aren't they? And the Kiris. Mm. Um, but within Kosovo and football circles now, I mean, you, you touched on it right at the outset, Nick, is, is he the star player? Is he the marquee player or, or is that probably putting too much pressure on him at the moment? Or could he become that? How is he viewed within sort of the Kosovo international setup? Oh, it's, it's he's priceless to them they um they they've got a few they've they've got they've got they've got a big striker Bedat Muichi, who's who's been at lazio they've got arba zanelli who is maybe the winger on the other side of the pitch um who who plays in france and i, I think i think he'd probably be be playing in the premier league now hadn't if he hadn't had a, a bad knee injury a year or so ago um but rashid rashid is the one i remember i i covered their first ever World Cup qualifier in 2016 in Finland because this 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 was was the next step of their remarkable story. They they'd done their first game official game against Haiti. Now they were UEFA and FIFA members and they could play World Cup qualifiers. So I I, I went to Finland and covered it. A few journalists did, and I think this was Milan Rashitsa's de debut for Kosovo. And the excitement everyone had. I was in the team that I was just buzzing. They'd come up and they'd just be talking about him because he was the guy they'd been trying to nail down. That they'd, they'd wanted him to be their go-to guy. And they got him. He made his debut. And I mean, they drew one one, I think, and, and he, he he was absolutely electric. And um he's 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 definitely out of all the talents that they've got, and they've got some very good, good attacking players, he is the one who they've wanted for so long, and is the one who, who I think they're most excited about. And, he, and he's still only twenty four years old, I think, which is the incredible thing. He's been talked about for for four or five years longer, but you think he's got at least that that amount of time left in him at the top level. Are you surprised then, Nick, that it's Norwich who've been able to do this type of deal? Because as I said, twelve months ago, very heavily linked to Aston Villa. Mm -hmm. Saw some very big clubs in Germany and also Italy um, touted with this guy. Is it a surprise to you that he's not that he's coming to the Premier League? That he's coming to Norwich City, a new team in the Premier League. I'm not surprised that Norwich are able to pull off this kind of deal because you've got incredibly clever people working behind the scenes who 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 think a lot more sharply and smartly than the majority of clubs. I've got to say, so so hats off to Stuart Webber and and, and Daniel Farker, and obviously got very good contacts in the Bundesliga too. Am I, am I surprised on on the face of things that he's playing for Norwich? Yeah, probably. Um, a year ago, I, I, I would, I, I'd have had him playing for playing for a more established Premier League club. Like I, but, and he's he's got the ability, Rashid, to, 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 to play Champions League football. No question of that. No question whatsoever. So Norwich um, has got a coup here, his contract running down, obviously. Werder Bremen didn't have a great Bundesliga season, and he he wasn't on his best form. I don't think he 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 definitely had been in the previous couple of years. So I think things conspired a bit where Norwich have got a bit of a bargain. I mean, to get him for what twenty five percent of an Emmy Buendia, thirty three percent of of an Emmy Buendia. They're not identical players, but it's it's incredible business. It's a, it's a brilliant piece of business. And on that front, just to finish, Nick, what type of player? Yeah, yeah, there are inevitable comparisons can be made with Emi Buendia. 
but it sounds like he, in terms of he, the template, the type of what his strengths and attributes are, probably mm -hmm. not a like for like. But, but what type of player are Norwich getting? Yeah, it's not like for like. Um, but he can play across across the the, the front three. Um, he's he's played on both flanks. I think a lot on the right. Um, very 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 quick, really quick. Like at his at his top speed, he's absolutely lightning. Um, sharp on the ball, nice little interplays. Light stab a crack from from, from long range. He's um, scored a couple of great um, great goals from range for for Kosovo. I think if you go on YouTube or something and find his goal from. I think against the Faroe Islands a year or two ago, where he just belts it in from 30 yards. Glorious strike. Um, very spontaneous, capable of the unpredictable, a bit like you guys have seen a lot from Emmy Brendier. I don't know whether, um, and I haven't watched Norwich every week in, in the last few years, but I've seen a bit. I don't know if he's got the weighting of his pass that Brendier had, and maybe, maybe the kind of playmaker esque side to his game maybe not as much although i think that's developed i think he's probably a bit more direct um and a bit quicker as well but there are similarities in in, in that he's versatile he can play across that forward line um and he's he's a really exhilarating spontaneous creative talent what about what about at the top end of the pitch if required, almost, uh, you know, maybe if Pookie, for whatever uh, reason, wasn't available or during a game tactically, if you need to switch, because that has been one of the planks of their mm -hmm. recruitment this summer, that they wanted a nominally a, a, an attacking wide player who can also possibly operate down the middle as well. Could he fulfil that role? Yeah, he's done that for Kosovo when um, when uh, I think the current striker Marici has been injured sometimes. And um, I, I think he did that for Verde quite a bit as well i i don't think he's going to be your your team Pookie 20 a season man ever but he's he's mobile he's a really hard worker all, all those customer boys will, will just run for you all day long and he will do that um he can hold his own physically so i think he could definitely play that role he's 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 not going to bag you loads of goals from there but he's going to play the role well and bring others into the game too and just to finish, Nick, do, do you think Norwich are now going to be a very popular team to follow in, in, in Kosovo, given the allure of the Premier League? Now they've got one of their stars. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. They, 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 they love the Premier League so much. They, they, they absolutely worship it. And, and I think now that their best player is playing for Norwich, I'm pretty sure the Bars in Pristina will be tuning in to, to games at Carrow Road. They, they'll be absolutely thrilled, thrilled by this. Um, and um, so will Rashid some other way because I think this is what he's wanted Premier League football for 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 quite a long time, um, and I think honestly, well, well, yeah, he's got he's gone to a newly promoted club. Knowing how he works, knowing how Norwich work, knowing knowing where both parties have come from, I think it's a really really smart move for both. I, I really do, and I I, I think it's going to work well. Nick, I think you've whetted the appetite of every Norwich fan there. Thanks so much for your time and your insight. All the best. Cheers. Cheers, Paddy.